In this video, I'll be talk uh, talking a bit about the day one first impressions of Attila. Uh, you saw the benchmark, Attila didn't run as well as I expected it to, but this isn't going to be a video about that. This is mainly going to be a video about the emerging balance that we're discovering as we play and test. I've run a ton of tests with um, with um, Armenian King. I've played quite a few multiplayer battles um, against some good players and what seems to be the case is that cavalry is a lot stronger than it was in Rome 2. Even factions that you wouldn't expect to have good cavalry have cavalry that can absolutely destroy infantry and Cavalry in the class of Nordic Horse Lords, for example, uh, with their, even though they only have a 35 charge bonus and uh, 30, uh, 45 melee attack, 32 weapon damage, they will absolutely destroy swords, axes, and falks units on the charge. It doesn't matter whether it's a two handed axe unit, two handed axe units do not do well against cavalry, they get charged to death. Some very good. Uh, some very good infantry units that absolutely destroy and in Rome 2 that would destroy cavalry will get destroyed by most charging cavalry. Now in one-on-one -on -one engagements between shock cavalry and melee cavalry uh, something that's very important to note is that for shock cavalry like for example these uh, Klebinari or Catafactari they will absolutely destroy melee cavalry on the charge if the melee cavalry charges at them in a similar formation. So two ranks deep, shock cavalry charges into melee cavalry. The shock cavalry is overall match for price, going to destroy um, similarly priced melee cavalry. However, in extended melee, melee cavalry destroys shock cavalry. Shock cavalry has a very low melee damage, while, uh, while uh, melee cavalry has a better uh, has a better uh, amount of melee damage and also has a bonus against large which you can only see by right clicking uh, the unit and then going into the the encyclopedia which is unfortunate and that brings me to another issue um, some very important stats are left out of the information you can get on the unit cards. So if I bring up a bow infantry unit, I would have liked to see how many shots per minute I can get and the range of the unit because those are two very important stats. That could, for example, tell me if I look at the elite balustari that the elite balustari have, uh, let's see, a rate of fire of 3 and a range of 125. Uh, they also have, let's see, if we compare that to the Armored Sagittari, the Armored Sagittari has a rate of fire of 6, so twice the amount, uh, twice the rate of fire as the crossbows, and then they have a range of 150. And this is something I would really have liked to see on the unit cards. I don't need these quick tips telling me it has excellent armor piercing and stuff, because I can just mouse over the missile damage and see how much damage is AP, 50 AP, that's massive. Um, I can do the same here for the Armored Sagittari, if I want to see how much AP they do, I can see it here. I cannot see their range, I cannot see their rate of fire on the unit cards. So, not something I'm a huge fan of. Now, in terms of missile block chance, it's a good thing that they added this to the unit stat cards in the encyclopedia. But, the missile block chance can only be seen in the encyclopedia, I cannot see it on the unit cards. And that is something I was a bit disappointed in, because missile block chance is massive. If we look at the pike, the the Manola toy, they have a missile block chance of, let's see here, it doesn't say. It only says they have a very poor missile block chance, so they might not have a missile block chance at all. But I would have liked to see, be able to look at the armor, shield value zero, okay, that, that means there's probably a missile block chance of zero. But I would have liked to see base value, 27, shield value, whatever that is, and then missile block chance, whatever that is. I don't understand why that isn't in there. Now, in terms of uh, the balance between spears, uh, spears, axes and swords, there are quite a uh, number of, of axe units introduced, and especially for the for the barbarian Nordic factions. 
the thing with these axe units is that they have a high amount of armor piercing damage but matched up against similarly priced swords they will usually come worse off much matched up against um, matched up against cavalry they will get absolutely destroyed so i have found it hard to see a use uh, for for axes swords tend to do better in most cases two-handed axes you would expect them to have a bonus against cavalry they do not uh, also two-handed axes tend to have poor armor and they will get absolutely wrecked by precursor darts and javelins so while spears are supremely useful against enemy cavalry in fact you need spears to counter enemy cavalry uh, there's been a major difference in how spears brace against cavalry they will not just take the charge now and and um, they will not just take the charge and not do any damage to charging cavalry because a lot of these spear units even though they are very cheap they have expert charge defense now and that means that the massive damage that shock cavalry does on the charge is going to be reflected back upon it that can potentially be very dangerous for units like these Klibinari that charge into spears 50 armor and 232 charge bonus they are going to take quite a few casualties when charging into braced spears but they need to be braced and another thing about cavalry is that it is super 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 strong any type of cavalry unit that has any decent mass and any decent armor is going to be able to absolutely destroy both swords and axes also the special romphaya folks units two-handed axes will get destroyed by cavalry in terms of skirmishers each skirmisher has a very specific niche uh, if we look at for example the the standard bowmen are going to do very little damage against uh, infantry that has shields and a missile block chance of about 50 so armored sagittari are going to have a hard time t destroying decent uh, decent infantry however crossbow infantry due to their massive massive missile damage and armor piercing can destroy infantry but they take a long time in doing so so the way it roughly works is that a funditores the slingers counter enemy skirmishers that have low armor but only 11 ammunition for these slingers and zero armor piercing damage means that they can do nothing against cavalry and infantry the same goes for the sagittari and the armored sagittari Although their missile damage is okay-ish, very low armor piercing, very low base compared to crossbows. So crossbows are for countering infantry, archers are for countering crossbows. You don't want to fire into the front of enemy infantry with your crossbows, uh, with your uh, archers, crossbows are much better for that. Now in Rome 2, uh, sword units, melee units were very strong uh, they are still strong but they're not as overpowered as they were if you bring straight up sword spams you are going to lose horribly to a half decent cavalry player cycle charges are devastating and melee cavalry can even be left in the fight for a long long time and due to their extreme health they can hold massively uh, so in in Rome 2 elite uh, elite infantry would have a health of sometimes 70 upwards of 70 uh, 65 more the norm but the health in some some units infantry units have a very high amount of health but if you compare the health to this eastern armored legio to the charge bonus of shock cavalry 234 charge bonus and uh, 234 health there are also cavalry units with 300 health it becomes apparent that cavalry has become a lot stronger especially when charging and it has become a lot less vulnerable to to sword units in melee um let's see here pikes are still good if cavalry charges straight into them pikes will still get defeated frontally by by uh, infantry so their use is marginal at best spare units due to the abundance of expert charge defense bracing and defensive abilities have gotten a renaissance and they are very useful now against cavalry 
the defensive abilities cannot be activated in combat anymore. So no more rushing in and activating shield wall, you actually have to activate shield wall. Uh, done a lot of testing on shield wall and it's a bit of a toss up whether it's better to activate the shield wall or, wall or get a charge yourself. Some units that have a low charge bonus will be better off using the shield wall because now shield wall, you can see on the, see if I put up a um, sword unit that has the shield wall. The shield wall is going to increase mass, shield defense, attack against infantry. It's going to increase missile block chance by 25%. So, if the missile block chance already is 40, it means that units with shield wall or other defensive abilities can boost their missile block to where it's worthless firing into their front. And there are, in terms of morale uh, and ammo, there have been some nice changes. You can see the morale actually dropping on the unit cards while it drops. can be very useful for keeping an eye on your uh, unit's morale. So the emerging balance now seems that to be that cavalry is m massively important and it makes sense since this is Attila, cavalry of the day started be to become a lot better but from what I've seen cavalry might be a bit too strong, a bit too strong of a change from Rome 2, sword units still good against each other. Swords overall beat axes, swords beat spears, spears beat cavalry, so it's all good in terms of those um, It's all good in terms of those rock paper scissor types of uh, uh, types of balancing uh, balancing uh, instances, but uh, From what I've seen cavalry super super strong You're probably going to have a bad time if you go light on the cavalry and your opponent goes heavy on the cavalry and you don't even have to have great cavalry you don't have to have the best best cavalry in the game uh, nordic horse lords will do fine just don't waste your time with skirmish cavalry like these nordic raiders they are not very useful so getting the cavalry charge is massively important now and another thing to note some war dogs are very cheap, can be super useful for uh, blocking charges. In terms of the special units, for example for the Sassanid Empire, elephants still die super easy to javelins, they die super easy to crossbows and to archer fire, they can also die to precursor javelins. So elephants, although they have a lot of health and a lot of armor, they are going to go down quickly to any sort of focused skirmish. They seem to do a bit worse in melee combat and spears are going to absolutely destroy them as well. Now, a peculiar thing is that cav cavalry mass is still very important. It seems that cavalry mass uh, greatly amplifies the damage done on the charge due to impact damage. And if we look at the um, Huns, they have a lot of medium and light units. Even some of their their uh, very expensive units are light shock cavalry. They're going to have a hard time against heavy cavalry units. And the, and the same with the medium melee cavalry, the Hunnic Devil cavalry. They, these are very good cavalry units. But you don't want to charge them head on into cavalry that has massive charge bonuses and higher mass than they have. Another peculiar thing is that some of the best infantry in the game belongs to the Huns. The chosen Uur warriors will pretty much destroy anything that the uh, Nordic factions and the Roman factions throw against them. With the exception of these, uh, let's see here, not the Vandals, with the exception of uh, Ostrogoths, I believe. Yeah, with the exception of Thracian Oathsorn. Thracian Oathsorn will absolutely tear through any infantry unit in the game, but just about any decent cavalry unit is going to wreck Thracian warriors and Thracian Oathsorn, because they don't have a bonus versus large anymore, uh, they have very poor armor, only 100 health, so these guys are going to get absolutely wrecked by cavalry on the charge, and cavalry that stays in for an extended amount of time isn't going to take a huge amount of damage from these guys either. They're just going to die horribly when charged by heavy melee or heavy shock. So um, my first impressions of Attila in terms of balance and in terms of multiplayer, competitive multiplayer, is that skirmishers are going to be far less important than melee cavalry. Uh, melee infantry is going to be far less important than melee cavalry. Uh, cavalry, using cavalry well is 
much much more important than it was in Rome 2 and because there are such high missile block chances on on many units and since they also have defensive abilities that increases their their missile block chance like 25 percent plus missile block chance for spear wall uh, that's up from 50 so 75 percent missile block chance from these elite nordic spears and a lot of other spears and swords means that it's going to be really really hard to get your skirmishers in at a good angle to do the damage um crossbows can still do it but seeing how expensive the good skirmishers are and how useless the low tier skirmishers are uh, the balance of the game currently favors cavalry massively over sword and axe infantry spears are basically just needed to to protect yourself from enemy cavalry and to get into the cavalry fights but the player who's able to bring the uh, to, to get the cavalry advantage on open maps is going to do supremely well now you can use terrain to reduce the effectiveness of cavalry of course but axe units and sword units are still going to get destroyed even uphill in a forest against good cavalry units so you need your spears you ideally need your spears to be braced and that's the problem uh, if spears aren't braced they aren't going to get the expert charge defense bonuses against cavalry and so uh, their use they're not as direct of a counter as cavalry is because you actually need your opponent to charge into the spears for that to work so getting the cavalry engagement going having spears in close support is going to be massive in Attila and I really look forward to seeing how the players are going to uh, what types of builds players are going to bring in the flash tournament I'm hosting later today because if players do what they did in Rome 2 bring me cheap meat shield units and um, and strong melee infantry it's going to be a bad time against cavalry the the really cheap uh, the really cheap um, <laughs> levy freeman style units there aren't many of them but there are some units like okay you have the uh, just amazingly cheap units some of them also have javelins they can be can be useful but they die super easy and some of them are too expensive to be viable and for example for the saxons we have a unit like nordic band it can throw a javelin that has a lot uh, does a lot of damage but it's just not levy freeman uh, level so those are my thoughts on the balance of attila cavalry is super strong swords beat spears and axes cavalry beats swords and axes spears beat cavalry if they're stationary or if they're able to join a cavalry fight but it all comes down to having cavalry to dictate the engagements you're going to take and not getting cycle charge to death because from what i've seen so far cavalry units can deal with an amazing amount of infantry units and take very little casualties strength and honor